To denature a protein is to cause its three-dimensional conformation to unwind and for it to just become a linear protein again. And this is relevant for a lot of things. It matters for enzyme kinetics and enzyme dynamics, as well as all of the structural proteins that are relevant for movement and transportation of resources. There are a lot of different things that can denature proteins, and all of them work by disrupting some force that contributes to the structure of the protein. Heat is probably the most famous and notable denaturing agent, and that disrupts all of the potential forces. Heat causes proteins to denature more than anything else can. If you have a change in the pH or if you introduce salt, that can change electrostatic interactions and that can throw off ionic bonds and other things that were causing the protein to be structured together like that. Urea breaks hydrogen bonds and that's a very crucial thing for the alpha helix and beta pleated sheet of the secondary structure. Organic solvents, naturally, because they remove the, the polar aqueous environment, those can disturb any sort of hydrophobic, hydrophilic interactions that were shaping the protein. And mercaptoethanol is an interesting one because that in particular targets the disulfide bridges that allows those cysteine cross linkages to anchor a lot of the protein structure. And so when you see denaturing questions on the MCAT, they'll often ask you what level of protein structure is being disrupted by changing the environment that this protein is found in. And these are the five things that can denature proteins. So recognize when something like a hydrogen bond is contributing to the secondary structure versus mercaptoethanol, which is disrupting the disulfide bridges that anchor the tertiary structure of that protein.